Just found out about these boolings. It's awesome. Look at this. I can take this. Boom. That complex shape. Five seconds. Again, take this. Boom. Look at that complex model. Topologies for suckers, man. I can do this all day. Look at this beautiful hard surface model. Let's turn on the wireframe, see how this is looking. Uh, doesn't look that great. But I'm sure if I select it and go into sub D mode, it'll smooth out fine. What's going on, you 3D modeling beast? This is JL Musi. Welcome to episode two of Fix My 3D Model. In this week's episode, we're gonna be taking a look on how to create a clean mesh from booleans when doing hard surface modeling within Maya. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button. The first video in the series got close to 250 likes up to date. I think you guys could do better. Let's see if you guys could actually beat 500 likes. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that notifications button. And lastly, make sure to snag the hard surface modeling cheat sheets, which is a great companion piece to all my Maya hard surface modeling videos. And you can find that link in the description down below or on the YouTube card right here. How this video came about is my man Nat hit me up on a comment on Facebook and was struggling with doing some booleans operation and getting a clean mesh. I think we all been there with booleans where we like the speed of being able to add or subtract and create complex shapes. But when you're a beginner, you also got to think about how these primitives that you're actually uh, booleaning together, how they're actually going to produce a clean mesh. And that's what we're going to be focusing in this Maya hard surface modeling video. So without further ado, let's get started. So here's the model he sent me. First thing that I'll do is I'll assign the almighty uh, blend to it. and I do like working with blends uh, when I'm doing hard surface modeling because that specular highlight will basically uh, show any pinching or it'll make it more evident. So with that being applied, the next thing I'll do is actually go in here and put it on wireframe on shaded. Uh, what I like to do is actually enable anti-aliasing for your wireframes. So what you could do is go here to render uh, viewport 2.0, uh, select the options and you can come down here to anti-aliasing and we could enable this and we get a lot smoother uh, wireframes. Uh, probably eight just to work on a long projects, a little bit of overkill. So usually I think a good uh, happy spot is about four. Uh, you can see how this looks with four and then if we in, uh, disable it, right, uh, you'll start seeing a little bit of artifacting there. So it really makes for pristine wireframes uh, while you're working, especially if you're doing screen recordings or even if you just want to uh, take screen grabs and show off your wireframes. So I'll go ahead and enable this. Obviously this will cause a little bit of a lag if your PC is outdated. From this point, I'll enable the move tool. I'll hit D to enter edit pivot mode, V to vert snap here. I'll hold down X and that's gonna allow me to snap right here to the uh, center of the grid. One thing I'm noticing about this model is actually built upside down. So in the Y here, if we go this way, this is our positive. Uh, I tend to basically work from the grid up. It's just kind of a best practice, especially when you start doing more complex things like rigging and lighting and just working in a team environment. So what I'll do here is I'll hold down J and that's gonna constraint to 45 degree increments. It's 45 because this is the setting. So when you hold down J, all you're really doing is toggling in the modeling toolkit. You see that you're toggling the step snap and really it's just whatever you have it set to. I had it set to 45, but whatever degree you have it there, when you hold down J, that's what you'll constrain your uh, snapping to. So let's jump here to perspective and then I'm gonna go ahead and snag a cylinder here in the channel box. I'll go to the inputs. This is gonna have to be 48. So if we take a look at this cylinder here, we can see that it's not really that uh, subdivided, right? And the problem with that is when you start cutting away all these little shapes into it and your main overall shape that you're cutting into is relatively light, that's gonna give us problems actually matching that topology 
and actually cleaning it up towards the end, right? So ideally, you want to have the same resolution of your bigger mesh and those smaller booling cutouts be pretty much the same. That way it's easier to connect the edges. That's why I'm actually going with a slightly more dense cylinder from the beginning. So I'm gonna put this back where it was. I'll put this here and I'll jump to the side view. And I'll make sure this guy is snapped right here on the grid. And I'm basically gonna go in here and just block this out. So I'm just gonna scale this up just to get pretty much the overall width. I'll put this up here with the multi-cut. I'll go ahead and drop one cut there to match that. One cut here, one cut here. I'll jump to my four views here, and sometimes I like to use all four views at once. I'll go ahead and select this vertex here, then going to select, convert selection, and you see that I have it right here hotkeyed, but we can do two faces, right? So I'm gonna do control three, select this guy, do control three, and that's gonna just uh, convert that to faces and have this cap selected. So with the scale tool, I could come in here and just filter these uh, two axes out and basically just scale this way. Now, what I'll do is actually bring this down a little bit, right about here, and then just scale out. From this point, we could just take the original here and push it off to the side. I'll drop one more loop right about here. Take these faces, extrude them out, give it some thickness like so, so this looks pretty good. Now keep in mind, since this is pretty much a repeatable pattern, right? We only really need to model a four for this and then the rest is gonna be readily duplicated. The flip side to that is that I can't create it like I normally would create a rim because I'm actually using booleans for this and for booleans for the operation to go properly, you actually have to work with watertight meshes. I'll create a cylinder here. This is gonna be pretty much our boolean uh, geometry and I'll give it 24 divisions. I'll jump here towards the top, enable wireframe on shaded, scale this down. I'll actually jump in here into wireframe, move this into place. And I can go ahead and just pop this up like this. I'm gonna go ahead and select these faces here, deselect these, so that way I can just have the cap. And I'll bring this down. What I can do is just jump over here to the side and just zoom in and bring this down like so. I'll just take these verts here and plop them out, just that way we're going all the way through. Now, one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're creating these meshes to be a bullying is that, uh, like in this case, right, you want to be real strategic about this. So right here, you really don't have much of uh, that much space to give us a clean loop here, right? So you really want to think about spacing when you are creating these meshes for booleans. It's not just about creating a whole bunch of primitives randomly and then just subtracting or combining or adding to them, right? You want to be real strategic and you definitely want to give yourself some breathing room uh, between you know these hard edges right here like right now we really don't have a lot of rooms if we were to clean up this mesh to actually drop some nice edge flow here so that's the first thing that you want to think about is spacing the second thing is matching the density of these two objects so this uh, main shape right is a little bit too light in geometry and then this smaller one is actually too dense at the end of the day, what you're gonna have to do this to clean this up is actually match this topology, right? So all these edges coming from here are gonna actually need an edge to hook up to here. Essentially, you wanna match the resolution of the large primitive to the smaller primitive. And that's kind of what I'm gonna do right here in this section. So if I start eyeballing this, uh, this slice of the cylinder is really not that much different size-wise to this. Doesn't have to be exactly the same, but the closer you can get this, the easier it is gonna to be to clean up the geometry after the Boolean operation. So I'll jump in here and select these edges, right? So you see that my mesh is uh, pretty much selected this borderline. I can go ahead and detach these components, right? So detaching, what it's gonna do is just gonna separate those components 
And now, even though there's still one, right, uh, if we go in here and we select this face, they're actually no longer attached. So the great thing about this is that we are utilizing edge loops to kind of slice that geometry, right? Uh, and then we can just double click and now this is a polygon island that we can delete. So from here, what I'll do is I'll select these guys here. I'll shift right click, I'll go to bridge. And then I'll take these two faces with the move tool, hold down shift, extrude out. And there is our Boolean geometry. What I'll do here is just select those bottom verts and then just nudge them down right about here just to kind of match uh, this design a little bit closer. Before we run the Boolean operation, we want to keep in mind two things. One is the actual distribution of faces that these two uh, separate objects are actually going to have once they combine, right? So we did a pretty good job here in actually matching these faces, right? That's why I put a lot of thought about, you know, this cylindrical face here, right? Is actually pretty even. So this is going to give us even quad distribution once this is clean. The other thing that we want to think about is actually adding edge loops now before we create the boolean process. And why is this important? Well, if we go in here and we run a booleans operation real quick, right? Now this actually broke up all our quads and using a tool like the multi-cut, our edge loops are not gonna go all the way through. A better option is to actually add the edge loops that you're gonna need before you run the booleans. So what I'm paying attention to is looking at this shape and seeing where these edges intersect this shape. And I know that I'm gonna need edges to actually connect, and that's where I'll go ahead and drop my edge loops with the Insert Edge Loop tool. So I'll do Control Middle Mouse Click to add one between uh, this uh, span right here, and then I'll do Control Middle Mouse Click again to add some loops in the middle. So now that we have a good edge distribution, I'm gonna select this shape first, which is the shape that I actually wanna cut into, and then I'll hold down Shift and select my Boolean or cutout geometry. I'll go to Mesh, Booleans, and then we'll run a difference, and there is our shape. And if we zoom in here, we see that we did a pretty good job of matching those edges, and our cleanup work has actually been reduced quite a bit, right? And typically I like to respect those cylindrical areas because even a small shift, you can start seeing imperfections in that perfectly rounded surface. So what I'll do is actually take the outside verts and actually weld them and kind of respect that uh, cylindrical uh, bended area. So I'll go into vert mode, activate my target weld, and then just weld onto those. Areas like this, that they're really close together, right? You see that they're not merged, but they're so close together that target weld can be a pain. So in this case, we can just select both of them and just merge them down. In the modeling toolkit, enable edge slide. So I'm gonna take this edge, slide it along this surface or along this edge in this case. And essentially I wanna get this a little bit closer to help me reinforce this corner and also drop a edge that's gonna go all the way around here and really just give me a nice support uh, for this uh, curved surface. I'll grab this vert as well, slide it over, slide this over here, and slide this over here. So now we can just take this edge here, delete it, and with the multi-cut, we could actually continue this edge manually. And this edge is really gonna help support this shape once we go into sub D mode. So I'm gonna take this loop here and just delete it. And now we're gonna be all quadded. I'll select this edge, drop a bevel here. And I am gonna basically deviate a little bit from this shape, from the original reference. So now we're gonna take that original bevel, re-bevel. And when you put a bevel on top of another bevel, you'll take your modeling to a whole new bevel. All right, all right, it was a shameless merge plug, but I had to take it. It was a perfect opportunity. I'm beveling on top of a bevel. I got a t-shirt named Whole New Bevel. Come on now, it's just perfect, it fits. So getting back to work, I'm gonna go in here 
And I want to basically space these out a little bit more. So you see we're a little bit wide here. So what I'll go ahead and do is go into vert mode, select these verts, and just make sure I have uh, edge or actually a uh, surface slide in this case. And we're going to just feather these out a little bit more. So that looks pretty good. I want to go in here, start focusing on this edge and making sure that it's going to crease up fine. We're going to need a couple more divisions. So with the insert edge loop tool, I'll add an edge here. I will also add an edge here. With the multi-cut, I'll go ahead and select this vert here, do control shift. Control shift is actually going to allow us to cut in 90 degree angles. We'll do the same thing here and we'll go ahead and extend this way. We'll also connect this. This should crease up a little bit better. Let's go ahead and clean this pole here as well. So I'll take this vert from here to here, connect this, right? And this is gonna quad this out. From here, we can go into our paint selection mode and just pretty much paint these right here. And we're just gonna clean this pole up. Multi-cut tool again, control shift, it's gonna snap. 9 degree increments we get those nice straight lines and we'll go ahead and just cut this way as well anytime that you do booling sometimes there's those verts that are not really merged but on top of each other so what we can do is go in here select all the verts and with a low threshold, right? Uh, sometimes this can be tricky if you're just dragging left or right, but if you do control and shift, uh, you actually get an extra decimal space, which gives you real gradual control. And you really wanna do low tolerances on this. Now all these should be merged. Uh, we can hit three, and you see that we're getting some nice deformations here on this side. And this is really the only side that we're worried about since this is gonna get deleted soon. So this piece looks all quadded. Um, let's go ahead and start preparing for the final leg of this, which is creating uh, this piece right here. So I'll go in here, select this range, right? I can bevel this and I'm looking for pretty much the overall thickness of this piece, right? That way it's gonna fit in better. So something like that. And I'll clean this up in a second. Not really worried about that at the moment. I'll go ahead and add a edge loop right in the middle. That's gonna help us with alignment purposes. I'll create a cylinder. And let's go ahead and bring the divisions down quite a bit. We actually don't need this many divisions for this, for the small piece. So I'll go ahead and set this to about 12. I'll hold down J here just to snap and get this pretty much flipped. Scale this down, move it out of the way. We'll actually jump to the top view here. It's gonna help me align this a lot quicker. So I'll plop this right about here and I'll actually keep scaling this down. So at this point, I'm pretty much just trying to eyeball the overall thickness of this. So as I start trying to basically match this, right, as far as the height, that's why I like to have those edge loops in the middle, especially when you go into wireframe, right? It really helps you make sure that you're almost flush where you need to be, right? And there's not a lot of guesswork. So I'll go ahead and take this scale filter and just scale down slightly here. I'm also just gonna delete everything but that one cap and I'll just extrude that thickness back out. I'm gonna jump here to the side view and just line this up a little bit better. Scale down like so. And sometimes with these surfaces, I like to work inside and kind of model my way out. So I'll extrude, give it some, give it an offset here just to kind of match that initial shape. From this point, we're gonna go ahead and take these verts here. We'll take slide off scale flat and then start scaling up like this and we could also take these guys and scale up like so right and what i'll do is i'll move this down a little bit like this 
and maybe just scale up like that. Take these verts, push them all the way in and scale up one more time. And now let's see how this is fitting. So now in object mode, I can just nudge that over, get this uh, pretty much flush with this edge, give or take. Now I can go in here, delete these guys, right? I'm gonna go ahead and scale up. Then what I'll do is I'll take these verts again and just scale up here. Essentially, I pretty much want this uh, edge here to be flush with that. So that looks pretty good. From this point, I can select the object here, extrude out, push out here like so. Normals will flip. We'll go to mesh display and we'll go to reverse and I'll just reverse our normals there. I'm gonna make this junction a little bit easier on me. So I'll go ahead and push this out. I'll take these guys here. I can start extruding out scale to scale that flat and you see that's going to make our life a little bit easier uh, what we're also going to need to do is actually delete those edges as well right so i'll take both of these objects here combine my mesh also need to delete these faces as well with the insert edge loop tool i'll match these guys up like so Now we can select these border edges, shift, right click, I'll go to bridge. Now these are one mesh. Now I can take this border edge, delete it. So we'll go to the top here, I'll select one of these edges and we'll zoom in. And you can see that we have a slight slant here. So just, just to make sure these are perfectly straight, what you can do is take these verts, hold down D, V, snap to this edge, scale flat. Same thing with these verts, I'll select them. Get my scale tool, hit D, V. We want a vert snap here. And then we'll go ahead and scale flat. And you saw that as we scaled flat, there was a little bit of movement. That means that they weren't perfectly flat to begin with. So we'll take this edge here, this edge here, apply a bevel, take that bevel, give it another bevel, and what do you get? Nah, enough, enough jokes, enough puns for today. I think you guys had enough. And actually looking at this, I think we could actually kill this edge here. So we'll do control and delete. And now we can go ahead and just weld these guys up like so with target weld. And then from this point with the insert edge loop tool, we'll start dropping some holding edges. Take this and just clean this up. Go ahead and delete that. So let's quad this guy out here. I'll delete this edge. And then with target weld, I'll weld this guy up. So the nice thing about working near a symmetry line is that you could always reroute geometry towards the middle, right? and it's fairly easy to clean up. So we'll do something like that. We keep everything quadded, and we'll just go back here towards the symmetry line. With the insert edge loop tool, I'll, I'll drop another edge here that's gonna help reinforce this shape. We'll go ahead and break this big end gun up with the multi-cut tool. Control shift just to snap to 90 degree increments. So that looks pretty good. Insert edge loop tool again. Drop an edge here. We want to reinforce this going this way. We'll drop an edge right about there. Multi-cut from here and we'll connect that up. And we'll break this big end gone up as well into all quads. We'll need some loops here just to reinforce this edge. So I'll drop an edge here, drop an edge here. Obviously, we're not going to want that going this way. So what I'll do is I'll kill these guys right about here. I'll just kill these two little uh, edges. 
Now I can double click, kill the rest of them. And what I'll probably do is, I don't want to extend that all the way out here. So I think what I'll do is take these guys, delete it. So now that those are deleted, I'll go in here, delete this, hang and invert, drop an edge right about there. That's going to help crease this up with the multi-cut. Just extend this this way. And now what I can do is go in here and just perform that mighty reroute pattern right here. And I'd rather not take these edges all the way over there when I can just kind of terminate them right here and just kind of reroute them towards each other. And let's actually do the same thing here. We, we don't want to reinforce this edge. That's going to give us some pinching. So we'll go ahead and take this range here. Control delete. Same thing here. Take this range here. Control delete. We'll take the multi cut here. And then we'll just perform our reroute pattern like we did on the top. And I'm going to take this loop here, deselect this, enable edge slide, slide this guy up. I'd rather have a straight edge at this point here. Uh, the other thing that I'm noticing is I'm going to need to reinforce this from the other side. So we will need to reroute this uh, a little bit more, but I'll go ahead and drop a edge loop here and drop a edge loop from this side, right? That's going to help hold up this corner. I'm going to take all these guys right here as well, delete them. So now I can delete that edge. I can delete that edge. And I'm actually going to delete this initial reroute. I don't even want it that high. I'd rather have it here on this flat surface. And that way we're not compromising this pretty much exactly what we did here at this level, right? So now it's less stuff going all the way in there. And it's not going to actually affect or crease these edges where we don't want any creasing. So the cool thing about this is that this is actually going to lend itself well for a diamond pattern. We'll select all these verts. We'll go ahead and merge them down. We can take this edge, delete it. Now, believe it or not, this is our diamond pattern, right? And these are actually quadded. So we're going to three mode, and this actually looks pretty good. This area is looking good as well. So now it's time to finish our pattern. So if we look at this final shape, it actually has some radial symmetry. And this is the way that I built it, is that we can take an eighth here and duplicate it to the other side, giving us a fourth, and then having that fourth, we'll be able to radially duplicate it. So from the top here, I'll go ahead and just select this half, delete it. I'll go in here, select this half, right? Now we have a fourth, and now we want to go ahead and get our eighth. At this point, I want my pie count information. I'll go to display, heads up display, poly count. That's going to give me the poly count of my scene and also my selections. I'll select this uh, strip right here. That's going to give us 12 faces. So if we go six out, right, that's going to give us our eighth because this is already down to a fourth. So from this point, we'll go ahead and take this symmetry line. We could simply detach that component, double click this, and that's our clean eighth. From this point, I'll go ahead and do shift, right click, mirror, options. We'll set this to copy, we're in the world, so that's gonna work as well. We'll hit mirror here. From this point, there's a couple ways that we can create our final shape. What I'm gonna do here is just make sure that the pivot is snapped to this pole, right? This is where we're actually going to want to duplicate from. And the newer versions of Maya actually let you, uh, with any transform, if you hold down shift, you're actually able to duplicate as well. And this is what we're going to do in this case. And for this case, I'm going to need to activate step snap with the rotate enabled and making sure that pivot right there is on that pole. I can hold down shift and this is set to 45. We're actually going to want to set this to 90. Now we'll hold down shift. And you see that we're snapping to 90 degree increments, which is exactly what we need. Uh, once you have a fourth, if you take 360 and divide that by four, that's going to give you a 90. That's why I set that to 90. So now everything is basically finished. And the last part of this is going to take all these components here. 
we'll go ahead and do a combine. We'll take our verge here, do a merge, do control shift just to get a very slight tolerance, right? Now this is important because you don't want to crank this up and start over pinching, right? So you want to basically use the lowest value that's going to work. So 0 0.02 looks like it should work. I'll hit three and this looks pretty good. I don't have any pinching here and all my edges are being held up quite nicely. I'll hit three, this looks good. I don't see any pinching. Uh, if this bothers you a little bit, the way this is banding, uh, what you could do is actually reroute this pole, but this pole doesn't really bother me that much. But what I would like to do is take this edge here and actually just bevel it slightly again. And I promise no more bevel puns, but I'll take this guy here and then just slide it this way, right, towards the pole. That's just going to contain that little bit of banding that you saw. And now if we hit three, uh, we'll kind of get these uh, nicer uh, loops right here on the top, right? So if we take a look here, there's no pinching. Everything came out good. And this was kind of our original result. And we can go ahead and turn on wireframe. And this is pretty much what we started with, what we sought to clean up. And this is just that final shape. That's the end of the video, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Maya Hard Turfers Modeling Tutorial. As always, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, drop your comments in the section down below, and I will catch you guys next time.